And I, I, uh, it's a little bit ridiculous how I formulate it, but I see really contradictions here. And they uh, more or less uh, um, follow the efficient market hypothesis with a certain twist, but in general they do. And, um, and then there is uh, one special element, especially in uh, blanchard Ealing, and that's the so-called new normal. And uh, uh, we talked about this, uh, modern monetary theory and the uh, Curie things. Um, so they assume a self-equilibrating system, but then the central banks play a major role. And that's new, because before, uh, the pri you had uh, uh, automatic price level uh, adaptations, and, and, and this did the job. Unfortunately, in the last 50 years, we did, we don't, we did not see uh, um, uh, um, um, deflations and, and so there, there is a certain contradiction when it can go only up and not down and so the central bank uh, uh, plays the role of the great equilibrator and uh, they are not only the watchdog or the firefighter in the financial crisis but they are also buyer and dealer of last resort and that's a lot and they play a, a very important role to fix the, the interest rate and then everything uh, works smoothly and, and well more or less and when you ask uh, what do have these different, uh, uh, let's call them theories, what do they have in common? They have a certain market affinity. Market affinity. In German it sounds very nice. I think in English, English it's a little bit unusual. Market affinity? Okay. Um, and then you have a certain minimalism. New institutional economics, behavioral economics, 20 pages, and then you continue with efficient market hypotheses. Students will forget this, and uh, in the final examination they ask, uh, what, what shall we say, the one or the other, and then, okay, then information economics, complexity economics, and a certain uh, part of valuation disequilibrium aspects. And so that's a wonderful confusion, you know, for the students. Very, wow, very bad. And uh, there are many excluded, uh, what do I do? Um, <laughs> So there are many uh, excluded schools of thought, you know, and uh, I saw here uh, institutional economics, etc. So many doors uh, which are open here uh, are not open in these textbooks, like post-ancientism, critical old institutionalism. Uh, uh, I refer to this group not because I'm older now, because but because I'm critical. Then uh, socio-economics. <laughs> So socioeconomics, regulation theory, Marxism, radicals, historical school, neoliberalism, ecological economics, feminism, auto liberalism, and the Austrians. And now uh, I will tell you what uh, these different schools stand for. No, I will not. Uh, I will only uh, make the remark they usually do not have this market affinity, maybe except auto liberalism and the Austrians. Uh, so, what is excluded in the mainstream textbooks, uh, there is a clear agenda behind it, in my view. And, um, and by the way, they do not support the efficient market hypothesis, but speculative, uh, speculative bull beer approach. BBA, you know, the BBA approach. Okay. And, uh, and, and, and that's, um, uh, it's a pity that, that so many schools are excluded and, and such a potpourri of different schools, uh, schools uh, is put forward. Because all these schools which are excluded uh, have interesting uh, points. Neoclassical uh, economics as well, uh, by, by the way, suboptimalities, yes or not? Sometimes they play a role, the Austrian markets, uh, uh, mar mar marvelous uh, operations uh, in a certain sense, that's, that's true. Uh, public choice, rent seeking, feminism, discrimination, Marxist capitalist exploitation, and, and that's my second point, most important, ecological economics, entropy limits of growth, and the present day um, uh, survival constraint. So uh, they, all have, they all have different key aspects, and unfortunately, uh, uh, they cannot uh, speak out. So, um, what, what is the general reception of the financial crisis in, in these economic, uh, mainstream, major, dominant economic, uh, hegemonic, you could say, uh, textbooks? Uh, so there is no self-criticism that maybe economists were wrong uh, in the textbooks before the financial crisis. Um, there are little boxes, you know, uh, where they say, ah, well, there were some problems in the financial crisis. Um, <laughs> Uh, usually in Germany, the translators, uh, 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 that's, that's the sugar they get, you know, 
they have to translate it, they don't get much money, but then they can make criticism of the textbook in the little boxes. Um, okay, um, that's what Billing did. Uh, oh, it's very late in the chapters, you know, and you have uh, 12 sessions uh, per semester, and then unfortunately, uh, chapter 37 uh, cannot be dealt with. That's really uh, bad. And then they are really descriptive, so they tell you what, what you read in the newspapers. Once upon a time, there was a subprime crisis, and you had a bony culture, uh, and you had uh, export surpluses, and the Chinese, for some reasons, they bought the American bonds, etc., etc. And so that's really bad luck that so many uh, uh, unconnected, more or less unconnected uh, events came together, and then you had the snowball, and it was growing, you know. So shit happens. Um, <laughs> Uh, okay, and, and, and fundamentally there were no conceptual changes uh, of, of these textbooks. Uh, uh, usually in the foreword or the preface they say, uh, especially Mankiw in, uh, in the new edition now, the translation, the German translation, well, uh, we, are, uh, we have a pluralist orientation and uh, we have learned something, etc. But then when you compare the chapters, uh, there's almost nothing new uh, under the sun, at least in the textbook. Um, so uh, that's, that's the general point, and we have some nice articles by Gartner, Metzen, and uh, some other persons uh, on this topic. And uh, Mencius, uh, let's come to Mencius' principles of uh, economics, and the uh, 2016 edition is not different from, from the newest one. And, um, and now guess what, what, what is his general orientation? Uh, uh, he has no prejudices against the state, uh, or uh, positively, uh, uh, for the markets. Rule 5 trade can make everybody better off, as you know. Uh, markets are usually very appropriate to organize economic activities. Ah, oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's science. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and prices increase, believe it or not, when the government injects too much money. So whenever we have a price increase, uh, uh, ask your government, you know, and read the bypass settle. Um, so this is really a, a very neutral, a very neutral uh, uh, rule-giving uh, process here, just uh, in the first chapters. And uh, now let's come to the uh, uh, to the um, financial crisis and the money, uh, banking, and finance topics. Uh, chapters 24 and 25: saving and investment and basics of finance. So they have the laudable funds approach here. Uh, first, you have to save. You know Adam Smith. You already. Adam Smith. First you have to save and then you can invest. Okay. Unfortunately, banks give uh, credit, as Schumpeter described, and you don't need these uh, uh, savings in advance. But it doesn't matter. I mean, the, uh, the great advantage is you have your supply-demand diagram and you can use it for almost everything, you know? Except when you die. I, I would like to see how you uh, formalize this. So, normal funds. Uh, so, uh, uh, savings and investment, so you have a supply and demand diagram, and that's, uh, that has to be criticized. And I think Steve King, he did this, right? Ah, he doesn't, uh, okay. Um, and then short sales, short sales and credit defaults, uh, swaps, credit Ausfallversicherung, they are great, you know, because uh, uh, that's better for the markets, uh, they become more complete, you know. And in the Greek crisis, you saw, you, you, you could see uh, how very uh, incomplete uh, this was. Uh, stock prices represent real values, and you have rational agents, and efficient market hypothesis is in general correct. correct. Okay, we have this little exception, but um, okay, the proof that it's correct are index funds, uh, your, uh, ETFs, you know, but that's totally wrong. Because in Germany, the, the major fund of ETFs, uh, exchange traded funds, is run by a person. Uh, uh, who is in favor of the uh, behavioral finance approach. And that's Mr. Weber in, uh, in Mannheim, you know. So there is really bullshit in, in these books. And I think this should not happen. Uh, okay, chapter 26, mon monetary system. No credit money creation, out of nothing. Uh, they come uh, up with the mo money multiplier. So you have the Holy Central Bank and they inject money, central bank money, high powered money, and then the banks uh, have a certain uh, leverage, with a certain leverage effect, uh, they can give credit, you know. 
And I would say that's not, not, not uh, totally correct. And even our, uh, our wonderful and conservative jo jo Deutsche Bundesbank admitted this in the April uh, 2018 uh, um, monthly report, you know, uh, besides the Bank of England. Okay, and so they have a great incomprehension how credit cycles and booms can originate. And uh, even mainstream economist uh, Claudio Borio of the uh, um, um, uh, of, of these uh, uh, European, of the Bank of International Settlements in the yes, uh, he, he, he wrote about this, and even Brunermeyer and our uh, good uh, uh, Miss Schnabel here, um, they, they, they wrote about it, that, that usually financial crises have to do with credit uh, expansion uh, processes, uh, exaggerated, and uh, this has to do with the, with the money creation process. When you ask uh, Schnabel in, in Frankfurt, well, then you must support positive money uh, to go uh, to the root of the problem. Then she says, well, I don't know exactly what, what that is, you know. <laughs> and uh, I mean, <laughs> that's really um, cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, uh, and many details, many details in this book, for, for example, about quantitative easing, OMT, and all these uh, nice unconventional measures, they are simply uh, not correct. Okay. But we have the new chapter 37. By the way, only in the German edition. Um, in the American edition, you do not ha even have this uh, keyword and you don't have this new chapter. So uh, maybe they are more conservative, privately run, I don't know. Um, and in the German edition, uh, this chapter comes uh, after page uh, 1000, you know. And the financial crisis first mentioned on page 812, when the students usually are very exhausted. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and the examination is very, very close. So, no, not the financial crisis, please. Yeah? Uh, some supply demand curves, that's enough. Um, and uh, they present here only unrelated events. Sabra and Bodhi, I mentioned this. There are no reform alternatives are discussed. For example, uh, is the state insolvency order, uh, should this be supported in, in, in Europe, uh, or uh, do we need euro bonds, you know? I mean, these are alternatives. Why not discuss it, pro and cons? That's uh, how a science usually proceeds. And uh, the state, uh, that's crowding out, you know? The state ah, usually crowd, uh, crowds out, you know? In the US, you can see how, how strong the crowding out effect is. Uh, um, they only have uh, 17 uh, billion uh, uh, public debt, and you see the problem. And uh, persistent budget deficits, or budget deficits in general, well, who knows, uh, are a big problem. You know, budget deficits very bad, uh, uh, very bad. Uh, the black uh, zero, you know, uh, that's uh, that's that's very good, and that's economic wisdom. They say. I mean, unfortunately, uh, when, when they uh, give comments in public, uh, they, they speak a different language uh, part, uh, part times. Okay. And now let's come to Blanche Illing. And uh, some, some uh, Keynesians uh, say, well, that's be better than Mancu and better than nothing, uh, uh, before Dolin's book was uh, published, maybe. Uh, but um, uh, Kohlender called uh, uh, approaches of books like this one a uh, dirty pedagogy. And I, I think that's, that's a good description. So you have the typical ISLM, but the LM with uh, a vertical curve because the Holy Central Bank can set the interest rate. Yes? Ah. That's bad because such a curve is, is much better. Uh, because you can be sure <laughs> you have a profit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> then there is a vertical Phillips curve, a vertical Phillips curve. So uh, whatever the state uh, does, he cannot influence uh, the general uh, um, 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 situation of the common economy. You have a natural rate of unemployment. So whenever you protect labor, you increase unemployment, and that's very unfair, folks. Um, uh, you, there are over-regulated EU labor markets, that's how, uh, how they call it, and they speak about uh, European labor markets in general. Um, the states, uh, when they talk about the state, always in connection with state failures, you know. Uh, so they, they make wrong things or ineffective actions, thanks to uh, Phillips curve, natural rate of unemployment. Uh, so, hands off what fiscal policy is concerned. Um, whenever the uh, economy uh, uh, um, faces a crisis, then 
there are external shocks, you know, asteroids or um, uh, oil shocks or bad uh, US Donald uh, protectionism, whatever, you know. But the economic system as such is stable. And so you always have external external shocks, and then the system has to uh, find a new a new equilibrium plus the activities of the central bank. So uh, these uh, the the system, there are there are no disequilibria uh, effects and no snowball effects uh, in, in in the center of the uh, market system itself, and um, that's the message. Pro free trade, climate change, does it exist? Doesn't it ex exist? And in Blanchardini, uh, they don't even mention it. I mean, that is surprising. <laughs> and um, that's, why, that's why I have chosen the second part, you know, because, because they don't talk about it. And equality, what does equality mean and inequality? Well, economists may talk about it, but then they act as philosophers. So uh, it's not economic art and tough science. Uh, this depends on your value judgments, on your subjective uh, inclinations, whatever, you know. So, uh, inequality, we don't touch it, we talk about allocative efficiency. And uh, the efficient market hypothesis is more or less implicit, um, at least that there, that there are no positive feedbacks. Because you can uh, argue, usually I, I do so, um, uh, that there are positive feedbacks uh, in the financial system because uh, you have no controlling factors when, when the money supply uh, or when the banks uh, extend credits and then the asset values increase and everybody feels fine and then the interest rate goes down and then the debt level uh, increases etc. and there are nice models. Steve, you have such nice models, right? Okay. No, not as nice as that. Ah, okay. <laughs> and finally, and finally, um, they, are, they are always in favor of growth. Uh, there are some chapters on growth and uh, old and new and very new growth theories and all that. And uh, that may be we have to step back, uh, no word about it. Um, okay, so deposits, finance, credits, but they are ambiguous because Illing went to a conference and then he was criticized and though, so they, they put in a little bit, you know, uh, uh, um, this, this different uh, uh, viewpoint, but students will be uh, totally amazed by these contradictory uh, statements there. Uh, they are neoliberal and anti-interventionist in general, but the new activism, the new normals, uh, the new normal, uh, that is important. So the central bank has to do a lot of things, even uh, when, they, uh, uh, when they influence the price setting process uh, 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 very, uh, very strongly. But that's okay, that's necessary. So, uh, what um, Philip Myrovsky said uh, called techno managerial governance, that's correct. The ECB's non conventional measures, they don't criticize it. They, criticize it. they say without this, the system may have broken down. Yeah, true. But then change the system. Now we have the central bank. And, um, and, and they are also, uh, they are neoliberals and anti interventionists, but the European stabilization mechanism, that's okay. And that's surprising, you know. I can't say both. I mean, I uh, uh, participated in many discussions, um, uh, in some discussions with politicians or so, and they were decidedly uh, liberal, what the labor markets are concerned. And when we came to this, uh, they, 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 they changed, you know. It's like a disc, you change and it's just the opposite. And then you say, uh, could you change again? <laughs> <laughs> And the only limitation is the zero interest rate, you know, that's the bad boy. Um, when, when we can overcome the zero interest rate, uh, then everything will work well. That's also Blanchard's uh, message uh, sometimes. And so, abolish, uh, uh, abolish banknotes, you know, uh, that's, that's a conclusion. And uh, Visa, MasterCard uh, uh, and the uh, security services, uh, for them that will be fine. And also for the state. Uh, okay. Lessons learned, an upper limit for real estate credits, okay, limits for credits in foreign currency, for example, Polish people, they, uh, uh, they uh, um, took a credit and, and they paid in, or they, they, uh, um, they did this with, uh, Swiss, uh, with Swiss money, and, uh, and unfortunately there was an appreciation and now they are surprised, oh, what can happen? Um, never, uh, never, uh, 
make bets in foreign currency. That's the message, you know. Uh, the increase of equity capital, Basel three, wonderful, okay. But uh, when you take, uh, when 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 you uh, have a look, uh, I mean this three uh, percent leverage ratio. That's that's really not that much, and it is not even um, uh, it, it is not even obligatory at the moment uh, in Europe or, or somewhere else, and and that's almost nothing. You know, you you only have weighted uh, the so-called uh, weighted uh, capital ratios. And uh, that's a good show because uh, uh, the state, uh, the bonds of the states of the European states, because they are riskless, uh, you don't need equity for them. You know, ha! Ah, very, very funny. <laughs> and uh, the question of taxes on portfolio investments and capital controls, they said, mm, who knows? Because uh, when the book was published, uh, this was, there was a debate. Uh, uh, at the uh, IMF and, and uh, opportunist economists, you know, then they said, ah, and they said, however, it is disputed to what extent such capital controls can be enforced. So, maybe better we don't do it. And what's their conclusion? That's one thing. So, uh, after many, many pages uh, and their confession that they really learned the lesson uh, of the financial crisis, uh, that, Jesus, <laughs> that is. That is their conclusion. One second. I don't know what is happening. Let me try. Let me try. <laughs> because people uh, like, like myself or above 60 years old, you know, the uh, the assumption is, which is 90% correct, that we can't deal with these problems. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this is the only thing I know. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> because it always happens. Uh, so the conclusion of Blanchard, if there is consensus, it is the belief that the adjustment process works in the case of small shops and under normal conditions. On the other hand, it fails in the event of exceptionally large shocks, hmm. and the scope for policy is then limited. Poor. It can take a long time for the economy to recover by itself. Oh. <laughs> so, so what's the message after some hundred pages of deliberations, explanation, charts, theories, crashes are possible and cut in full? Politics can counteract only very narrowly, and people have to clench their teeth, and maybe for a longer time. Thanks, Blanchard-Elling. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> I mean, this is really, uh, I don't know, is this ridiculous, or what is it? Uh, in, my, in my view, it's really... Uh, it's religion. Huh? It's religion. It's religion, yes. Hmm. <laughs> Which one? Which one? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what they leave out are the export uh, export surpluses, also vis-à-vis -vis the the Club Med, the German the German surprise, uh, the global uh, debt bubble, uh, the growing uh, global debt bubble, and no word about this, and then this may cause a problem. Uh, a greater sorry for the German greater inequality, uh, which comes close to the situation in the twenties. You know this, the Piketty debate, and uh, here the red line, this is the size of the banking sector relative to GDP, and you could think, well, maybe this exponential process is a little bit exaggerated, and we should shrink, <laughs> we should shrink the banking sector. I mean, when you see this, you, uh, well, maybe. Uh, the concentration of financial megacorps is not discussed, so they have this liberal affiliation, but uh, BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, Fidelity, uh, PIMCO, Amoni, Capital Group, and uh, all these other groups, usually US uh, based, uh, they, they, they don't mention these problems, you know. But they mention the, uh, the problem in the labor market that there are trade unions, you know. So. <laughs> and the ECB, as a political substitute player, uh, uh, is not criticized. I mean, uh, the liquidity provision prevented uh, the global meltdown, uh, that's for sure. But now it's 10 years after, you know. 
and uh, uh, they, uh, there was a considerable complicity for the, uh, in the financial crisis because the ECB, for example, and the Fed, and, or let's restrict it to the ECB, uh, uh, they, they could have implemented haircuts and then, for example, uh, the, the Greek bonds, uh, the interest rate would have increased in 10 minutes. No problem, they didn't do this. So, uh, uh, so, so, so they say we are not responsible for this and now we are the great savior. And that's not true. And they were te teammates of the reform or austerity policy. And uh, I thought these persons are experts for, for mon monetary policy. And then they made precise uh, prescriptions uh, to the Greeks how to reform the labor market. Uh, surprising. And uh, 10 years later, uh, we have a monetary central planning economy in a certain sense with OMT, QE, zero interest rate, negative interest rates. And they do not dis discuss the distributional effects, for example. Um, and also, the, C the central banks fuel new bubbles, you know. There is a close correlation between the, uh, the increase of the uh, money supply, um, and here in this case, uh, but in Germany, it's the same for the DAX, uh, for example, the MSCI World and, and other indices, uh, uh, that, the, um, uh, that the stock values increase. We have a new bubble, you know. They don't discuss it. And also the asset price inflation here, the red line, Losbach von Schwab, they investigate this, it's, it's not mentioned. And when they say, well, uh, the, the, uh, um, we have to do all this, um, because inflation is so low, they only have to, uh, to, to, um, uh, to include uh, the, the houses which are used uh, by people who uh, own the houses, yes? And, and then you have an inflation rate uh, above 2%, no problem. And, um, and it's a total misunderstanding that the inflation rate, the harmonized uh, uh, consumer index, is influenced by the central bank policy. It's mainly influenced um, uh, by the conditions of the labor market. Because when people have money, they buy things, and this represents the inflation, uh, or this uh, you get in the uh, inflation rate. And uh, when you have an austerity policy, uh, then the inflation rate cannot go up. It's as simply as that. So what the central bank is doing is a wonderful excuse, and some people believe it. Um, now let's ask what is left. What's left? So uh, the pragmatic scientific functionaries, uh, uh, they have some reform to do. Um, a shrinking of the financial sector, that's not discussed, you know. And remember this red line of the banking sector. Um, for example, a deconcentration of mega banks, let's say 100 uh, billion, and that's the limit. Why not? I mean, uh, Reagan um, uh, uh, did this uh, with AT&T, and why not uh, do this with mega banks? And I mean, in Germany, we don't have the problem because uh, the, the mega banks deconcentrate themselves, and that's very <laughs> nice. Um, but in other European countries, it's uh, it's different. Uh, so, sovereign money reform, we talked about this, or narrow banking, if this is too much uh, for some people, narrow banking, so ring fencing, fencing of retail banking, why not? Uh, so, um, that, that you can uh, uh, sleep well. The prohibition of sorts, uh, short sales and CDS, a 30%, not a 3%, a 30% leverage ratio, why not? Uh, this was uh, usual some uh, 50, 60 years ago, why not? Um, capital controls in specific situation to stop some uh, stops, uh, financial transactions tax, uh, and there was um, uh, there, there was really a great attack on this on this tax by tax by the financial sector. And why? Uh, because all the shadow bank activities uh, would have stopped to a high degree. Because when you are a money market and you are engaged in repos which were responsible for the financial crisis, then you have to renew this repo every day. And then the financial transaction tax is a very, very bad thing for you, you know? And the so-called maturity mismatch would be fought against with such a financial transaction tax. And also derivatives. Derivatives would shrink by 60% or even more with this tax, and that's why they uh, uh, fought against it. And I found it very funny that our German finance minister, uh, he said the financial transaction tax is great, and then one of his uh, uh, final activities has been uh, uh, to uh, take away the Gemeinnützigkeit uh, from attack, you know. 
So that's double speed, wonderful. That's how our politicians. Um, and the most simple, simple reform would be a one day holding period. So not in one second, but one day. And when you say this in Frankfurt, uh, they, they want to send you to the hospital, you know, uh, at the Shamakai, because, um, because they say, well, well, all our models, all our activities uh, will be ruined, more or less. And then you say, well, that's how, how efficient this reform would be. <laughs> so, <laughs> so a one-day holding period, that's very simple, and everybody can, can understand it. Because usually it is said that the stock values should represent fundamental uh, changes in the fundamentals of, of a company. And I, I never hear that these fundamentals change in a millisecond, you know. Uh, maybe you can give me some information on this, but uh, what we do. So, economists, they are supporters of the political economic, of the political economic regime, you know. And uh, so that's my interpretation of this. Uh, where, do, where do mainstream economists and our textbooks, where do they belong to? And this I call the International of Globalists. <laughs> and, um, and they contain uh, uh, inside job economists, central banks, big finance, mega corps, media giants, the rich and wealthy, and the political establishment. And um, at the moment, there's a very stable coalition, except one thing, the political establishment. Because the, these were the so-called Prokos, the great coalitions in Germany and in Europe. And it's really frightening how this great coalition disappears. Have a look in France, in Italy, in Austria, even in Germany, in the, in the new, uh, not so new uh, Bundesländer here, the, the next elections in the States. The AFD uh, may, may have uh, the, ma the majority, not the majority, but most votes, you know. And you, you can have a look, uh, 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 United States, Brazil, uh, Philippines, where, wherever you look around, India, you, you know. And it's really surprising that this political establishment of the middle, it begins to disappear. And uh, I, I think this is really, really um, a very problematic thing, not because I like this political establishment, but I dislike more uh, people like Bolsonaro, uh, who says, well, the rainforest, uh, we have our, our wonderful uh, Mercosur Treaty now with the European Union. There was no revolt. They send us cheap, uh, wonderful German cars, um, and they get soybeans, and we cut the rainforest. I mean, that's a great deal, isn't it? Uh, that's what's just going on in the last days. Okay. Um, now we can ask, uh, okay, you criticize the te textbooks. Are there alternative textbooks? Yes, Goodwin and Dorman, for example. Even in German, believe it or not, uh, there are some, uh, uh, some good uh, books on micro and macro. And then we have alternative textbooks in English. Sometimes they are absolutely unknown. For example, what am I doing? <laughs> um, for example, Kohl, Reintroducing Macro. Excellent, chapter, chapter 11 on central bank policy. Uh, here we have some others, uh, the core team, uh, okay, Dulin uh, uh, and, and Reardon here, uh, with a strong uh, ecological perspective, that's one of the uh, newest ones, okay. And these uh, uh, books, they deal with positive feedback, speculation, hurting, irrationality, the central bank policy as an interest group, uh, politics, even narrow banking is discussed, and the prohibition of CDS. Okay, now I wanted to... Uh, 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 to present you the shadow banking system, but uh, I think that's uh, too technical, and um, <laughs> and therefore my second point here is beyond GDP autism, and uh, my interpretation is that we uh, uh, at the moment we experience this economic system's last jerks, you know. So it's time. It's it's like the German Democratic Republic in 1989 or nine or so. <laughs> Uh, or Germany in 1943, you know, uh, it's like this. Uh, people are living their normal lives, but uh, e everything breaks down. And when you have a look around, uh, uh, there are 30% less butterflies, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, um, the Gulf Stream uh, doesn't work, uh, the jet stream, uh, uh, you have problems, etc. So what, what we need is uh, this going by on GDP autism, and this is 
uh, gross national happiness. Don't let's talk about Bhutan. Um, there are <laughs> so there are a lot of, of different aspects: cultural diversity and resilience, community vitality. And I will focus on this year: ecological diversity and resilience. Because I went to a demonstration of the Fridays for Future, and at the end you were allowed to walk with them. Um, it was in Wetzlar, and um, and many people talk about this, and it's the main topic. But I think uh, uh, that most people do not understand uh, how problematic all this uh, is. So let's come uh, last time to our uh, economic textbooks, and here you can see um, here you can see. Uh, on uh, 3%, 1.8, that's the record, between 6.9, but that's the alternative uh, textbook. So, uh, in usual textbooks like Stiglitz, uh, Samuelson, McConnell, Manchel, Krugman, and Frank, and some of them are considered alternative, like Frank's, for example, Krugman. Um, so, the ecological aspect covers uh, three, uh, three, between 1 and uh, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6%. Um, of the content, you know, and that's not uh, that much. And um, okay, as you all know, we live in a global ecosystem. Sun energy comes in and heat uh, goes out, and yet then you have an economic subsystem. And the crucial question is, uh, um, how big is this economic subsystem? And here it's really small, you know. So you do not have so many things, and you have enough uh, 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 resources here because we are a semi-closed system vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the, the sun. And now the, this economic sus the subsystem grows greater, uh, bigger and bigger, and now it's like, no, that's not possible, but um, maybe like, like this, you know. And uh, here, oh, it's like this, wonderful picture. And um, this here, let me see. <laughs> ah, <yeah. laughs> So, and that's absolutely not funny, you know? <laughs> that's the personal, personal connotation. Um, and um, because tomorrow I go to uh, uh, Corinthia, a uh, canton in Austria, and, and this was my, 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 my beloved house, you know. All these super long books I wrote in the year. And then I looked here out of the window and. <laughs> Sometimes spitting, but I don't know. Um, okay, so that's what, that was my wonderful, uh, uh, my lovely tiny house. And um, yes, it was. And now it looks like this. And, and this has to do with uh, climate change. Because there, there are tornadoes now. And, uh, and it's raining, 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 raining for four or five uh, days. And it looks uh, even worse now. But, uh, uh, my, my tears would be running down if so I present this uh, semi-destructive uh, situation. Um, and that's how the, how the roads look like, uh, look like, and also in Italy, you know. And, uh, and so, in my view, apocalypse uh, is, is here and now. It's very, it's very close. And that's, that's absolutely no joke. And tomorrow I go there and, and, and try to uh, pull it down. Abriss is angesagt. Yes, really. Um, and here you see some some numbers, you know. And uh, I mean, uh, this is mentally illness when you pretend that this can go on. Uh, here you have um, from the 50s to the se to 75, you have the percentage increases of human population, cars, uh, oil, gas, uh, coal. Uh, but also corn, etc. You know, and here you see the increase in percentages: 160, 400, 500, 680, etc., etc. And then here you have it from 1975 to 2000, and here you have the percentage increase. And now economists tell us: well, when we extend this from 2000 to 2030, and then we begin with uh, zero, uh, with uh, CO2 neutrality in Europe because those who decide on this will not be on this earth any longer uh, in 2030, so they can make these decisions. And it's no problem to increase all this also by two, three, four hundred percent, you know, like this. And in principle, this can go on forever. 
I mean, when you present this to a person uh, uh, who, who did not read newspapers and who is not manipulated uh, by uh, our common culture and uh, most important, uh, did not study economics, uh, such a person would say it's absolutely impossible to think that this exponential process can go on forever. I mean, it's, it's, it's very simple. And uh, you do not have to be a natural scientist to find this out. And you always have these exponential processes, and then, unfortunately, 80% oh, uh, 80, 80 are still uh, only the richest 20% wants to know this. And there are 80% waiting in line to have the same level of work. So the great challenge, we, let's reduce it. Now, car production, uh, um, one car needs up to 400,000 liters, you know, even Tesla, uh, or maybe especially Tesla, and uh, that's a lot. And you say, I knew it, but uh, now you, uh, you drink coffee. Unfortunately, uh, um, for one kilo, 20,000 liters fresh water. And chocolate, uh, 100 grams, 3,000 liters. Oh, Jesus. I did not want to choose avocados because you know that already. Um, and the main point, uh, and that's, that's the major point now, uh, the problem is that uh, um, the growth imperative, that this is the, the logic of our economic system. Oof. Why? Because we have wage-related labor. Most people, 85% in our society, are job holders. So uh, when growth stops and productivity increases occur, we have unemployment. And then these people have nothing. They have nothing. And so, implicitly, they have to, uh, they have to accept the system, otherwise they are unemployed. And they have no personal reserves. That's a problem. Uh, peasants had such a reserve, you know. Uh, then we have a growth-dependent tax state. I mean, with MMT everything will be different, um, but that's the situation at, at, at the moment. So the state has to support the production uh, uh, of SUVs um, to get, uh, have a higher tax income, and then they have enough money uh, to prevent the consequences or to fight against the consequences of, this, of the uh, uh, SUV emissions, you know, that's the logic at the moment. Then corporations, especially big corporations, they want to make profit. How do they do this? Uh, they realize economies of scale, so they produce as much as possible. Ah. Then we have a global provisioning of goods and services. So people want to go to uh, uh, high-end, high uh, Hennis and Mauritz, or even worse, Kick, and there they, they get uh, cheap clothing. So that's a motive, not to fight against the system. Then uh, we have uh, debt, debt money and uh, compound interest. I mean, the central bank fights against compound interest at the moment. But um, uh, when we stop this credit, uh, uh, credit process, uh, then the problem is uh, uh, that the uh, money, uh, money supply will shrink and then um, uh, uh, we will face bad consequences. And we have a consumer democracy and uh, uh, many people are not interested in democracy, but they are interested in, in consumption, you know. And uh, I have one wonderful... Ah, Jesus, where is it? Wait a second. Uh, here it is, I showed you. I read it this morning in Der Spiegel. Uh, you have an advertisement here for the Seat. For the Seat, nice car. And they say, hab Spaß, leb dein Leben nach na, deinen Regeln. So, have fun, live your life according to your own rules. So, ecology and all this, you know, why should we care? I mean, that's the, unfortunately, that's the message we get with all these advertisements, you know. And then we have the, uh, 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 the, the confessions of politicians that we have to change a little bit. And so we are living really in a schizophrenic uh, situation at the moment. On page one, you read about the newest uh, results of the World Climate uh, 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 Commission. And on the second page, you read about the success of a Rhein-Main Airport with a 3% increase of passengers last year. And then you, you so page one, page two, it's like in the textbooks. Uh, so, 
And, and that's, that's the problem. We, we have a system logic and we have to change the system logic. And when we change a little bit here and a little bit there, that will not change the system logic. Okay, okay. so uh, we must have a post-growth Europe. That's, that's the new vision, you know, in my view. And this means a reduction of material throughput by two-thirds. So to declutter, uh, I, I had to, to look for this word. Um, um, what does it mean in German? Entrümpel. <laughs> right. So the great Entrümpelung, you know. <laughs> that's, that's, that's necessary. And uh, this is based on scientific results, you know. I summarize it here. Uh, but I think two-thirds. Think about it, two-thirds of all the materials were good, and, and then we have really an empty world here, you know, and, uh, but more space for other things. And uh, we have to fix the uh, maximum uh, resource use for many, many resources, not only CO2. And for example, the ban of plastic, in my view, uh, should not take place in some years, or the little plastic bags, and now our uh, environmental ministry says, well, maybe we have to ban it because they don't do it uh, deliberately and uh, all this. Um, CO2, uh, two to three tons per person a year are okay. At the moment, uh, uh, we uh, consume uh, nine or ten. And when you have an intercontinental flight, and because you are internationally uh, oriented on, and want to know other cultures, etc., uh, then, then you uh, get uh, 15 to 20 tons per year. Uh, that's very easy. But when the, um, the user rights were distributed uh, equally worldwide, and we assume uh, seven uh, something more billion people, uh, then two to three tons uh, would be okay. So no more coal, uh, and we would need a, a fossil world cartel with the 13 uh, greatest producers, because when the oil is produced, it will be sold anyway, you know. Uh, so uh, uh, it should not be uh, it should not be uh, uh, drilled and, uh, anyway, and and you have to give them money for this. You know they have to shrink it, and um, and the oil must be reduced uh, five percent per year. And and you see that's that's a full stop, um, but it doesn't happen. And not deeper than five hundred meters. We talk because then catastrophes uh, are very probable. The risk uh, increases substantially. Or we have to tax it when we can't do it internationally. And then the minimum would be uh, 180 euro per ton right now, not in 2030 or so, you know. Uh, in the long run we are all dead, yes, really. <laughs> uh, we, we, have, we have to do it, we, we, we have to do it now. And that's really, that's tough. What's the price of a uh, ton of CO2 at the moment in Leipzig? 20. Huh? 20, 30. Yes, between 20 and 30, 20, 28 at the moment. So, ha ha ha, that's necessary. And in my view, these are the last slides by the way, um, we need fair trade, but this means no social ecological dumping. And therefore, we need socio ecological climate tariffs. When flat screens are produced in South Korea uh, 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 for a very low price, we are all happy. Uh, but, but have a look uh, how it looks uh, like that. And so uh, we, we need such climate tariffs. And then they will change their production techniques or we will do it ourselves, you know. Um, so I'm absolutely in favor of these tariffs, otherwise it, it doesn't work. I know, this is exactly the opposite of the WTO and all these other institutions tell us. And uh, bad Trump, Trump is in favor of uh, protectionism, and we are anti-protectionists because we are liberals, you know. But I don't know if this is the wrong, uh, if this is the right philosophy. And taxes must be mainly on resources, uh, in total about 70 percent. And then may, maybe very quickly the gasoline price will be 10 euro per liter, and then uh, there will no, be no more jams. <laughs> <laughs> I came here by car today, and that would be wonderful, uh, but expensive. Um, and so, dematerialization and common usage, uh, that's, that's, the, that's very important. And we had this discussion in this MMT group, uh, one, one person mentioned it, formal employment 20 hours per week. Not more. We are too productive, unfortunately, you know. And scientists are allowed to read books, so there is no uh, webcam uh, checking. Uh, if they are playing table tennis or so, and not reading, uh, this, I hope this will be allowed. 
And uh, we also need uh, active repair cafes and care work, you know. So, uh, Eigenarbeit uh, in the uh, Nico Pech Dictionary, uh, Eigenarbeit and care work, uh, um, um, Sorgearbeit, Sorgearbeit, very nice work, not in the Heidegger, Heidegger uh, sense, you know, but uh, care for your uh, older uh, people, etc. And uh, when, the, when, the, when the cake does not grow and even shrinks, then uh, the, the question becomes more relevant, uh, who gets what? And so you have a look at the distribution of the cake. And then there, there should be a maximum income spread uh, on the daily's point also of 1 to 10. Otherwise, we get a social revolution. And um, this will have very painful uh, consequences. Um, we will have uh, uh, usage regime changes. I don't know how, how to put this in a better way. So no private cars. All this electricity uh, stuff, that's nonsense, you know. Uh, when you take the, uh, the um, uh, the ecological rucksack, uh, the footprint, um, the private cars uh, are simply not sustainable. <laughs> Very easy. And they can make research as they like in, uh, uh, in Stuttgart. And there would be, there would be uh, almost, uh, I, don't, I do not mean the manipulations, um, and there would be almost no flights, folks, oh. unfortunately. Maybe two intercontinental flights uh, in your lifetime. So. We have to plan it very carefully. <laughs> but Greta tells us how, how the alternative way, you know. And when you only have to work 20 hours, you have a lot of time to go to the US. Okay. Um, so, uh, local production and deglobalization. And many industries will disappear, and there will be very high unemployment if we really do the necessary. And then the question is how do we prevent a counter revolution? And therefore, uh, we need a conditional basic income. Uh, conditional in the sense that, we, uh, uh, that, that people who get it are uh, unemployed, that they will uh, 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 work for communal, communal social or uh, communal social or ecological work. And there's a lot, of, a lot of things to do. And now where does the money come from? If we want to become independent of the finance industry and of the growth imperative, so that we get the taxes. And here there is only one uh, uh, possibility, and I did not include this in the last 15 minutes uh, uh, as an opportunist to the MMT discussion. No, um, we need money gifts of the, central, of the central bank, you know. So the central bank gives money to the state or uh, uh, public institutions, and then they think how uh, the unemployed or what they can do, what, what makes sense. And uh, uh, to, to get rid of uh, plastic, that's, that would be a, a great job. And uh, we have to deal with this for centuries. And uh, finance has to shrink and to be simplified. If not, ah, yes. Um, I, I didn't know that it comes here. So, <laughs> I mean, we are living in the Anthropocene, yes? And uh, we are really on the way of self-destruction, and that's, that's no job, or a very bad job. Um, and think about a methane, uh, uh, a methane uh, hydrate, I think that's the word? Okay. Um, methane hydrate, that's a very unstable, uh, unstable uh, molecule and uh, combination. And there are billions of tons in the permafrost uh, uh, and in, in, in the oceans, you know. And now uh, scientists find out, well, uh, these methane uh, molecules, uh, they will show up very quickly. And that can cause a major catastrophe, uh, uh, like, like a catastrophe which happened 60 million years ago. Okay. Um, so what we need, last slides, we, we need grassroots movements, and at the same time, central planning is necessary. I know, younger folks don't like central planning. And uh, I, I'm absolutely not, not, not a socialist, you know. But uh, when, we, when we try uh, a duration of the res resource usage, uh, I don't know how, how we can do this in a decentralized way, way like the Greek uh, polis uh, some hundred years ago. That will not work. Um, and this must be decided and allocated collectively. Uh, I think this will not happen in the near future. We will face major ecological crisis and then we Maybe uh, in Europe or worldwide, uh, people will, will change their mind, I don't know. And uh, at the same time, uh, that's the old argument now, um, technological development is necessary. So it does not help that we go back to uh, an agricultural, modern 
uh, plant society. Um, because one day, one day, uh, asteroids will come down, and uh, as you know, Andromeda is approaching, and uh, <laughs> the sun will be the sun will be uh, exploding more or less, and uh, and then the house is burning, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And therefore, therefore, we need technological pro uh, progress. But this should not be uh, uh, oriented towards uh, um, uh, privately used gadgets or so. Uh, it's, it's like the, uh, the landing on the moon, you know. This, these projects are, are uh, important. Not now, not in the next uh, 10 years, but in principle. And main, mainstream economics, uh, uh, there are sounds of silence or disorientation. Uh, in Dortmund, there was this uh, conference of the uh, Fridays for Future, and Christoph Schmidt, our supervised uh, 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 chairman of the uh, advisory committee, uh, he was there and he made some uh, calming proposals, etc. So that's the mainstream and pluralist uh, economists. Uh, for them, it should be a major concern, and they should point out uh, how severe the situation uh, is. Um, yes, that's our wonderful planet in the silent universe, so we are responsible for all this. And um, yes, um, and a new imaginaire for human civilization is necessary. And my, my favorite here is uh, Hans Kallenbach. I couldn't get a better picture. This is a book written uh, uh, in Utopia in 1978, and uh, there 50% was given back to nature. And you could hunt there, but you could not use uh, uh, machines or so. And uh, it was it's high technology plus a primitive uh, ecological uh, uh, life, you know, because we are uh, body-centered uh, beings and uh, um, we like biodiversity and all this. And uh, then we, we, had, we do not work so much. And because this was written in the 70s uh, in exchange for our work, there was a lot, uh, there should be a lot of uh, sex and drugs and rock and roll. I mean, that's an alternative, isn't it? Um, well, uh, that's our mission. They are future. And let's heal the world and make it a better place. And that was the last slide. Thank you.